So now that thing is over, let's talk about his apology letter or his comeback letter. Do I believe it? No. Like I mentioned before, I am not naive enough to believe that he, he's got a lot of atoning to do and he's already been in a lot of trouble previously. But it's great content. It is really good content. And it's in the mind of somebody who is... I mean, he already has a confessional video on YouTube. That's a pretty big deal. So we're just going to read this. I know there are a lot of concerns and even more questions with me coming back on social media. So I wanted to take a moment and answer at least one of them. I am 100% responsible for the mess that was created, and I apologize sincerely to the people that were affected. Saying I'm sorry doesn't change what I did, nor does it do anything to help those I hurt. Personally, I hate hearing those words because a majority of the time, the actions and behaviors coming from the person apologizing don't reflect that they are really sorry. I'd rather show it through my actions, which brings me to my first point. Am I really sorry, and how do I prove it? Or is this all a facade? So without giving him the benefit of the doubt right now, I think a lot of things are not correct here. I would imagine that he had time to think over this letter for many months, uh, not just weeks, many months. And this is a very templated letter that he is going to read us. So I think, don't know if it's sincere. I think... Sincerity comes from randomness, and this is clearly not a random letter. I am really sorry, and how can I prove it, or is this all a facade? I understand that no matter what I say, there will always be those who don't believe me and claim this is another scam. 99% of the audience, <laughs> yeah. Those are not the people I'm writing. Oh, yeah, so I haven't read this beforehand. Oh, there's like 1% left. For those out there that believe in second chances, now, is this his second chance or is this, you know, a little bit more and believe it is possible for someone to change no matter how bad they messed up, I'm sorry and have attempted to show it as best as I can. When news of everything broke, it would have been easy to turn off my, what? Okay, so isn't that what he did? He went to ghost mode. And that's, <laughs> I remember it was like ghost mode, right? Didn't, and wasn't the blackout turning? Okay. Instead, I posted a video admitting my faults to the world to see. I could have made excuses or pointed fingers, but I didn't. I don't know if there was anyone to point fingers to. Maybe Z. I own up to it and made a promise to make it right, no matter how long it takes. Posting that apology video and admitting what a piece of shit I had become was one of the hardest things I've ever done. But this was that was the first step in revealing to myself that I had a problem. When all this stuff happened, I knew I effed up and I wasn't convinced that I was the problem. Deep down, I blamed others. I blamed the market. Oh, so he did blame the market and the timing. So he was aware that the watch market was not good. I was angry that I had done so much for others, and now they were nowhere to be found. Oh, wow. I can think of a few people. <laughs> Liz Darby, right? Uh, After my arrest, it only got worse. It took several months for me to finally have a aha moment. I was reading. Oh, God. These are the Amazon books. Uh, Jesus. The Law of Human Nature by Robert Greene. And when I got to the law of narcissism, I was blown away. I didn't cry at my twin brother's funeral. Yet I couldn't make it through one page of the chapter without getting emotional. I finally realized what a full-blown narcissist I was. People called me one before. But I paid no attention to those idiots, signs of a narcissist. All I could think of were the horrible things I've done and the way I've treated people. I used them as pawns to get what I wanted. I stirred up drama because I craved attention. All the nice things I did for people I realized was actually for me. For the praise that came with it. 
I thought I was a good, oh, a, a good boss and was business savvy. In reality, I was just a control freak that thought I was the only one who knew what they were doing. I would wing things to make them look. Okay, so uh, I would wing things to make them look effortless. Ugh. Then move on to something else if they didn't work out. Oh, and it was someone else's fault when they didn't. Yep, I saw that. I was never willing to admit that luck played a role in my success. Market timing. I lied, I manipulated, I stole, I hurt a lot of people. I broke everyone's trust. It took me losing everything, winding up homeless, living out of a storage unit, sleeping on the beats and back in prison to finally realize what a mess I was. I deserve everything I'm getting. I deserve to go to prison. I lay awake in my bunk every night thinking about all the things I did wrong and how I could have done them differently. Sometimes I can't sleep because it bothers me so much. What I would give for a chance to do it over knowing what I know now. Coming back to prison has forced me to really look at myself. Everything I own fits in a 2 by 4 locker. I wash my clothes in the sink with a bar of soap. I wake up when I'm told, I'm, I eat, and when I'm told, I go to sleep when I'm told. My life doesn't belong to me anymore. I'm empty inside. No, oh, it's a little sad. I know you guys don't like me to say that's sad, but it's a little sad. I've been empty for a long time. I'm told I'm full of insecurities and voids, and I'm working towards understanding the root cause and how to fix them. Okay, let's finish up this. I may not be able to fix the damages I caused, but I'm going to try. There's no telling how long it will take to repay my debt. Well, with interest, it could take a long time. Maybe a 10% interest, uh, it would be very difficult given the amount. Like I was saying, when you owe $5 million at 10% interest, which is really kind on $5 million, you're talking about you got to make 500000 to make your payments. That's tough. This is the only solution I can offer right now. Yes, a measly 250 isn't even close to putting a dent in the millions I owe, but it's a start. I'm doing I'm doing time regardless, but at least this approach gives my victims a chance at not getting screwed twice. To anyone reading this that was directly involved and there was somebody who contacted me and they were not happy, but again, the turnout wasn't that dude. It will take time, but you have my word. I will fix. I will stick to fixing my mistake. My only hope is that I succeed and one day earn your forgiveness. For now, I'm going to keep taking it one day at a time. Two, I know people have questions related to my former employee and dealers I'm associated with. My coming, Me coming on social media was not to stir up the pot and cause more drama. I'm responsible for what happened. No one else, they have moved on with their lives and do not deserve to be harassed by the drama and the hate that follows me. I do not want to cause them any pain. I want to respect their privacy and allow them to live their own lives. I will not talk now nor in the future about anyone other than myself and my role in anything. Please do not ask if me coming back is, a, is to interrupt anyone else's life. I would rather remain a ghost. We talked about this. We talked about how we have to talk about Roman and Liz and Darby and it just it was not negotiable, right? And I get why you don't talk about them right now because you don't want to bring them in the legal stuff. But after, and it's going to be soon. Um, it's going to be in a month or two at most. Um, I don't think there's going to be any delays is from what I understand. We can address a lot more interesting issues. Right now, I just want to have people like Crime Peace on, maybe Noel. Maybe uh, anyone else who wants to be on, if you don't want to be on, great. We can uh, do Q&As from the questions that we have accumulated every week. What happened to the money? I spent it. Oh, that's not, I mean, again, we, we have like, I haven't read this letter until now, but I knew that like some of this stuff was not right and I confronted him about it. And I have these text messages. I said, Anthony, we cannot do this if this is all it is as a promotion. We can't do this. You know, the first phone call was very nice to you because I didn't know it was you. But we have to give people what they want. If you want to do this with me, I've been very critical of you. And now people think I'm not. When you can watch any amount of my videos and they are very, very critical. We have to do it my way. 
Now, there is some push and there's some pull, right? He wants to do it this way. I want to do this way. It is what it is. What happened to the money? I spent it. I plan to give a full interview talking about the whole entire ordeal. I will. So after the sentencing, and we talked about this, there are certain things that he can only say after sentencing. And he is open to doing it. He is open to doing it. Um, how can I say this to you? I, I will put it this way. I'm the only person who can do this for him. That gives me a lot of leverage to control what I is asked. Like, you know, even if we ask him funny questions, I will have to ask him the funny questions because that's what I agreed to. He, there is, I, I, I'm getting the sense that after the sentencing happens, there is the ability to do a documentary. There's no ability to do a documentary right now, and that's why there's no talk about this. Um, and he's specifically saying that the guy hasn't contacted him, but I've contacted somebody, and without giving, their, it's pretty obvious. <laughs> you know, I, like if this thing blows up, everyone grows. We all get bigger. Everyone covering this topic grows. And shout out to the Reddit. Um, I, I had a ni really nice message from a Redditor today, of all things. You guys deserve this. You guys deserve this. And you deserve to make fun of me for doing this. And you deserve to be very critical for platforming him and so on. But what would this channel be? What would the TPG Reddit be if we don't have content for not another nine months, potentially, if not for multiple years? This is a great story. Like when you watch Netflix, Tinder Swindler, the person making the documentary in some aspects is platforming the scandal, the, the person in the scandal. But in some other aspects, they're kind of showing what the traps were. How did... How did women fall for this? How did he buy this jet? And how did he rent this? And how did he take money from here and then move it there? In many aspects, is quite educating. That's what I'm hoping to do. I will. I am very biased, and that's why I need Crime Peace on. I'm begging him to get on. Um, I know Anthony will probably say yes because he's very desperate. And he doesn't really have a choice uh, to do this but with me, and that's where we are. As, as funny as you guys make it out to be, it's probably true. It just ended up being me and Anthony. Like, like how weird is that? So, how effing weird is that, man? It's so wild. It, it's so wild. Um, it's me... With my green chair. I can bring back the green chair. I know you guys love the green chair. I know we don't have the green chair now because I can bring back the green chair. It is in my garage. I can bring back the green chair if you want as condolences for basically saying I whatever you guys want, I'm, I'm willing to do. Um, it's me and my green chair interviewing Anthony in jail. That's the bottom line. You couldn't script a better story than that. You kind of do it. 